Hello my angels, welcome back to my channel. This is a little bit of a different video than I have done before besides the Bringing Home Rosie vlog. I will put that up above. And I know before we got Rosie, I watched a ton of these videos. So if you have put a puppy comes home or a three month pup date video online, I have probably watched it. My name is Amanda Weldon for any of you who are new here and I don't have Rosie on my lap because while watching those videos I realized it can be very distracting for the presenter when the puppy is running around and today we are going to be talking about me and my partner's new dog Rosie. Just so you guys know there are timestamps down below if there's something very specific that you want to know about. I'm going to be doing this video in chapters so just go and check those out if again you want to refer back. Also, anything that I mentioned in this video, I will also be linking down below because there are a lot of products as well to speak of and I know that those links helped me in my whole process of getting ready for Rosie. So let's talk about Rosie's three month pup date. Rosie is now officially 17 weeks old and I feel like time has absolutely flown. So first of all, let's talk about her little personality. If you are deciding to get a mini golden doodle, know that you are going to get such a loving and happy and playful puppy. I feel like Rosie is just one of those really curious and adventurous dogs. She's not afraid of things. She's very brave. She's very courageous and she wants to say hello to absolutely everyone. So if you're someone who definitely wants to have this dog, around family members, kids, and in the family for a long time. This may be the perfect breed for you. As well, Rosie is an F1B. So her mom and her dad, her dad was a poodle and her mom was a golden doodle. So she's actually 75% poodle and 25% golden. And the mixture of these dogs is really amazing because they are born to please. They want to make you happy. And again, that just reassures you that they are great family dogs. When we were first getting Rosie, one of my biggest concerns was, okay, what the heck? There's so much information to take in. What about her shots? What about deworming? What about um, heartworm medication? The vet is going to have all of that information and they are going to keep you on track. You're going to get a little pamphlet. You're going to have everything filled out for your dog. Now things are a little different with COVID times. It was kind of tough because we couldn't go in with Rosie and we actually have her last of all of the shots, her little booster today. Now, something important that a vet will tell you is the reason why we get these vaccinations, of course, is so that your little puppy doesn't get sick. And when they don't have those vaccinations, they're going to be very vulnerable to things around. Vulnerable like licking puddles, something could be in there. Vulnerable to if a dog has maybe gone to the washroom somewhere and they're sniffing around that, that could make them sick as well. And vulnerable to a bunch of things, even meeting other dogs who haven't had their vaccinations. So one thing that I found really helpful was being vocal when another dog was approaching Rosie. I would say, just so you know, Rosie hasn't had her vaccinations yet. And we would only introduce her to a couple of dogs that we knew had their vaccinations and were right on track. So when it comes to that vaccination schedule, your vet is going to have absolutely everything ready for you. Just make sure you contact them and register with someone that's close, someone that you trust, and maybe someone you've been recommended in your area. Rosie does have a microchip. And so we got her in London, Ontario, and we reside in Burlington, Ontario. And so we registered her with Burlington and the vet system here. I had a question about spade neutering because if you grew up in the time that I did, Bob Barker reassured that you were gonna get your dog or cat spayed and neutered. Control the pet population. Have your pet spayed or neutered. And I was thinking, when is that? It's around the six month mark. So as for this three month pup date, nothing to worry about there yet. And also we were talking to one of the vets and he said it's good to get it done earlier because less has developed and it's going to be a little bit easier on that dog recovery later time so this is maybe something you want to factor in if you are heading out or you're going on a vacation just know that six months that your puppy has been alive it may be time to consider putting off other plans and having that in the schedule let's talk about rosie's favorite things it's like oprah rosie's favorite thing today is your lucky day this Rosie has a lot of favorite things and I'm excited to show you. Again, all of these things will be linked down below. I'm looking at all of her stuff right here and she was very perturbed that I brought them into this room <laughs> and she was not able to have them. So speaking to that, pups love squeaky toys. 
and these ones have been phenomenal. Now we got a couple of these from PetSmart. I know we got a ton of advice from other dog owners as well, saying you can get, definitely grab some of these at the dollar store as well, and they are pretty effective. She's been really good. She hasn't totally destroyed these. She did destroy a zebra though, and it will never be the same. And that is the one that she came home with. So we've been ensuring she has tons of toys. So these little squeaky pets are really, really great. And then we also bought her this. It's called the Tuffy. Now you can tell she's definitely pulled some of these strings out, but it also has little squeakers in it to keep them activated and excited. When they are just tiny puppies, this thing is going to look absolutely ginormous against her body, but I guarantee your dog is going to grow into it. This is a toy we definitely recommend, and she has been loving te teething on that and chasing that. Speaking of chasing, also grabbing a ball is such a good thing. The thing that I find so funny about Rosie, and it's been so amazing watching her grow up too, is that she will play with herself. Like she will literally hit this ball, see it go, and she will chase it. So highly recommend one of those. Getting a smaller one at first is also great because she could actually fit it in her mouth. And then also grabbing some Nyla bones. Now we are going to be talking about teething in a moment's time, but look at this girl. This has been a recent progression, so maybe less of a three month pup date and more of a four to four and a half month pup date, but she has been going ham at that thing. One of the absolute biggest things that we were recommended when we were going to get Rosie and we had made the decision was a snuggle pup. This is so, so important if you are going to be crate training your puppy, which I definitely recommend. We had a great experience crate training Rosie and now she is definitely comfortable in her crate and she knows that it's her space. But a snuggle pup has this little Velcro here that you can open up. It's a bit satanic when you do it right in front of them and they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> but it also comes with this little heart. And now if I press it, if I hold it down, can you hear that? That's a little heartbeat that you put inside of Snuggle Pup. So um, you can set it to be active for eight hours by just pressing down on that button once, or if you hold it down and then it starts, it will just go on infinitely. And I believe they take double A batteries. Definitely get a couple of backups of those because we ran through one quite quickly. But Snuggle Pup is so amazing because it makes her feel like she has her litter mates with her. The first couple of nights of getting your puppy it's such a scary experience. They have no idea what's going on. They have been taking it away and I can't think about it too much or else I'll get really sad. But this is just a way of comforting your puppy and making them know that, you know, they've got someone there and it feels a little bit more familiar for them inside of their crate. Another thing we have absolutely loved for little Ro is these gentle wipes. They are by Well and Good. And we actually got this in a pup box, which I will also link down below because it was one of the best gifts that we were given by one of my best friends who had also just recently got a puppy. It came with a bunch of fun things and you can choose the subscription box based on the age of the puppy. But these wipes, they are baby powder scented. They smell amazing. And you can't really give a puppy too many baths. Like they get quite itchy, they get quite dry. You don't want to traumatize them by the water, but just wiping them down with these wipes really helps them feel fresh, feel clean, and really helps them feel fresh and clean to you as well. Now, if you do go down the route of getting a golden doodle or an oodle of any kind, you're gonna need to brush their hair. And it's something that, you know, if you start early, they won't be too traumatized by it. And if you do it often, you know that you're not going to be pulling their hair too much. Now, I grew up in a family that had two standard poodles, so now they look like absolute horses to me compared to Rosie, but we always used these brushes. It has those fine little bristles and they are quite flexible. You'll want to get one that's quite flexible just because, especially right now, their skin is so sensitive. But opposed to using this too much, the one that I use much more often is actually one that I had for my own hair for a long time. It's called a Tangle Teaser and it's very, very flexible in the bristles. And it's basically just to kind of get those surface level knots out of there and just, I, I kind of run it through her a little bit and then I just send her off send her off packing and then she just can go and enjoy the rest of her time. But I know that when I bring her to the groomer, she's not gonna have tons of matting. One, that can be extremely uncomfortable for the dog and two, that might actually run up your price tag when it comes to a grooming bill. 
As for grooming, we actually did find a local groomer to take Rosie to, and the reason why we did that is because she was starting to grow a lot of hair around her face, and she couldn't really see. So they don't do at this age, when your puppy is this young, they don't do a full groom, even though you are going to need to sign up for those to get their hair cut, because it's very different than a dog that simply just sheds. So you will need to get them groomed, but don't worry, it doesn't have to be too poodly if that's not what you want. But we got her basically the puppy cleanup, the introduction. So with that, you want to go to a groomer that has a puppy introduction because they're going to be cleaning their ears, around their little feet, around their private parts, and around their face just so they can see and they will just do a bath and then a blow dry. But the reason why a puppy introduction and something I would check in with your groomer about is that they're going to let them sniff around and get comfortable with the idea of it. The groomers, one, again being taken away from your parents, you guys, and then going to this place with all of these different smells and sounds and then they're getting touched and prodded and, and all these things, it can be a really overwhelming experience. So you want to make sure that any experience you bring your puppy into, they're going to have a positive one that they feel safe going back into. A puppy introduction is a great place to start. Another area I really wanted to do a good job in was her food. Poodles can have a touchy st stomach, and so I wanted to make sure that she was off to a great start and she was having fine bowel movements. If you guys have never had a puppy and you're in a couple, you are never, you have never talked about bowel movements as much as you were about to. Every single day you're gonna talk about it. So this is how Scotty and I kept her on track and what she was eating at first. So when she first came home, she was just on this wet food. It was the Blue Buffalo Homestyle chicken dinner with some garden vegetables. This is great, just for the first little bit, especially when you're worried that they don't really have teeth that they could eat kibble with and you don't want them choking or anything like that. So the wet food is great for the first maybe couple of weeks that you get them, um, eight to nine to 10 weeks, but you still do wanna check in with your vet about that. And then, we actually went to like a local bottega and we were talking to a smaller business when it comes to their food. Now, there's tons of great food out there. We were also hearing that Royal Cannon was really great. We went with this Now Fresh. I'm not sure if they'll have it where you guys are just because it depends on where you live. I know that this is a bit more local, but it's 100% fresh turkey, salmon, duck, and it's the puppy two to 12 months. So we really like this one. It looks like pretty basic kibble and Rosie really likes it. Now the reason why you don't wanna stay on that wet food too long and what you can start doing as well that we learned from the vet is you start mixing in some of the dry food with her wet food. And the reason why you wanna do that is when they get their little teeth, the dry food is how they clean their teeth. And it's to make sure that they don't get too much tartar buildup or they don't get any gunk in their teeth. It's gonna really help to keep their oral health strong. So making that transition, we started doing it slowly by adding in some of that with her wet food when we could really see that she could chew it up. And then eventually we made that full switch over to the dry food. In that transition where we were transitioning from the wet to the dry food, Scotty had this great suggestion and he had seen it a few times before where you put a little bit of water on their food. We shake it up in the bowl and then we kind of drain it and we just make sure that it's a lot softer. It's really important that puppies don't have a sudden drop in their blood sugar. So we were actually feeding Rosie four times a day and our times were 7.15 around then. She was waking up around six to seven. So anytime she woke up, boom, we were putting food in her bowl. And then our next time was around 10.30 30, 2.30, and 7. So if you just write that down somewhere, it's gonna really help you uh, just figure out, you know, making sure you're on track. Speaking of writing things down, this is Rosie's book. You guys are gonna be tired. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna be tiring. There's gonna be a moment where you first have your dog and you're gonna be thinking, what have we done? But you know what, a switch is gonna flip and eventually you're gonna say, oh my gosh, I can't imagine my life without this tiny little fur being with me. But this was kind of the beginning of Rosie's calendar. Especially if you're doing this with a partner and you're not doing it alone. Sometimes one person's gonna be doing something, another person's gonna be doing another thing, and you're gonna really wanna keep track. So what we did is we literally kept track of everything. So down these columns in each day, we would write when she had a pee, when she had a poo, when she was fed, 
all of these things if she had an accident, if it was outside, and then we would write little notes like, this is so cute, this is week two of having her, and we wrote, Rosie is 4.5 pounds, nine weeks old. She gets three to four tablespoons of kibble each meal, and it's just really nice to keep track of all these things. One, because then you're not second guessing yourself, and two, you can kind of start to see the habits and the routines that they just have themselves. Speaking of habits and routines, going to the washroom is a big one. You're probably going to want to take your pup out at least once an hour at the beginning. They are going to have tons of accidents and that's okay because they're going to give you a lot of love too. We definitely do have puppy pads. So we have these little pads. I tell Rosie, I'm like, I'm putting down your diaper because we live in a condo. So it's been kind of hard, especially when we got her in the colder months when we were taking her out, getting her all ready, getting her all set and all of these things. But I would highly recommend to watch other videos about how to train and housebreak your dog because I am most certainly not an expert in that. I'm just here to tell you, you're gonna need some of these. Another thing you're really gonna need is little puppy bags. And we got this little dispenser that you can basically just hook on your belt and it's got those little poo bags. I think I could probably make a TikTok that's like, tell me you have a dog without telling me you have a dog. And there's just these bags everywhere, every pocket, everywhere. <laughs> and you're gonna need them as well. Speaking to a couple of little training things, your dog might be picky. Rosie does not like chewy treats. She really, really loves these though. She is absolutely obsessed with these. They're called Crumps Naturals and they're mini trainers. They're freeze dried beef liver and they're a hundred percent that ingredient. So they are one ingredient. They do not mess with her tummy. They are made in Canada as well. And we also have this little pack that again has a little belt loop thing that we can hook on. And then just when we're walking her or anything like that, we always have treats with us. And we really love positive reinforcement when it comes to training our dog. And the book that we were recommended is this one, The Perfect Puppy. It's a phenomenal read. It's by this woman called Gwen Bailey. And she has tons of pictures in here as well to illustrate her point of what's going on. And she very much believes in positive reinforcement training versus like uh, yelling at your dog or kind of hitting them underneath their um, chin there or anything like that. Like she doesn't include anything like that. The way that we quote unquote discipline Rosie if she's getting up to no good, which is usually something she's getting up to something that she could hurt herself with, is we have this spray bottle and <laughs> we spray it at her. We've also seen people who go Ch -ch -ch, and that has really helped um, with us or having a little can with coins in it. And then it's just kind of like shocking. They're just kind of like, oh, that's not something we should be doing. Along the things that you're going to need are a little vest or a collar. We like to have this little vest. It's just, she, we put her little legs in it and then we just wrap it around her. And what's really helpful about this is when we pull her, it pulls her whole body versus just pulling her neck. And then of course you'll need a leash. This was the first one that she got in extra small and we have now upgraded to this one by Cavology that we have also been really enjoying. One thing you might wanna have if you are on the go or you might wanna stick in the car is one of these little bowls because we definitely don't want them to get any sort of heat stroke, especially now that we're in the summer. Bringing water with you everywhere is something that's gonna teach you that you now have a new list of things that you need on the go as well as a microfiber towel that just really helps you dry them off quickly and then they can get on to being a puppy. A couple of very last things that I'll talk about when it comes to golden doodles and getting your puppy for the first three months is their ears. It's very common for golden doodles or poodles of any kind to get ear infections because they have a lot of hair in their ear. Now their groomer will hopefully take care of this but getting your dog comfortable with you using a cotton ball in their ear is something good to start off when they're a puppy because likelihood you are going to have to do that to clean their ear when they get older. Just notice the wax buildup. I know this sounds weird, but smell their ear. Notice when it's how it smells when it's healthy, because that's how you're gonna know how it smells when maybe they have something going on in there. They'll also kind of dip their head to the side if their ear is really bothering them and start to itch it. And they'll kind of like walk their ear to the side. And I just know this from having poodles my whole life. Rosie also had these little eye stains when we first got her. And that is very typical of having a little pup. Don't worry, it's nothing wrong with them. They don't have an eye infection or anything. Thing. just take a warm washcloth and just kind of dab and clean away the eye gunk because if you don't do that it could build up and just become a little bit sore it's also just nicer for them to have their eyes cleaned oftentimes when they're very very young their mom is going to be licking their eyes anyways and just cleaning that up so now without their puppy mom with them you are gonna be the one who is gonna be cleaning them up teething is a lot it's gonna be a lot but you know what I constantly just remind myself oof 
she is probably so uncomfortable. One of the things that we've done to really help out with teething is wet a washcloth, roll it up, put it in the freezer, and it just is such a soothing trick for their gums, nice and cooling. And then of course, all of the teething toys and just trying your best not to have your hands inside of their mouth when they are going to take a chomp down, but it's gonna happen. As for their teeth actually falling out, their little baby teeth, that's gonna be around the five to six month mark. For crate training, it was kind of tough at first, of course, Rose, uh, <laughs> She did not want to be in her crate at first, but we held strong and went by we, I mean my partner Scotty was so good at this. And anytime that she whimpered in the night, we also don't want them just being extremely upset. So we would just go out, not say anything, because sometimes they actually do have to pee, especially when they're really, really tiny. They can't make it throughout the whole night to have to go to pee. So we would just come out, let her out, take her to a little pad, let her go pee, and then we would just put her back in and we wouldn't play, we wouldn't talk or anything like that, and we would just sit back to the crate, kind of reading our book, and eventually, guys, you're gonna have a full night's sleep, and maybe it'll be like 10 to 6 a.m., 10 to 5 a.m., but it's gonna be the most glorious thing ever, and you're gonna make it there. I promise this isn't forever. Make sure you're just paying a lot of attention to your pup. They're gonna tell you so many things, like when they have to go to the washroom or how they signal for those things. And it's gonna be really important that you notice that if they go to the door, that means they have to go to the washroom. Remember that every single day is just you guys learning about each other and it's totally going to work out. You just really have to pay so much attention to them at the beginning. We have opted into pet insurance and I'm glad we have. It just gives us a little bit of peace of mind, but definitely do your research on which pet insurance might be right for you. Other than that, now Rosie is just such an integrated part of our lives and it's really taught Scotty and I a ton about our own relationship and how we communicate and how we take care of something that isn't ours. And we look back and we're like, wow, our life was so easy, but it was also so boring without them. Now that she has her full vaccines, we are so excited to take her out, show her absolutely everything and really get her used to this world. But now you watching this video, you may be just at that brand new puppy stage. You're gonna have so much fun with this as well. And they're just gonna be the most adorable thing. Take tons of photos, take tons of videos because they grow every single night, seriously. You're gonna regret it if you don't. I hope that you guys liked this video. Throw a big like on that if you did. And please do subscribe because there will be more rosy features, I know it, and as well pup dates on the way. But we actually have to take her to a vet appointment right now. So I've gotta run. Bye guys. Ha <laughs>